So let me show you a few practical things about working with the solderless breadboard. You'll get a lot of experience with this in our course, um, but let me just show you a few things. So this is what it looks like with nothing plugged into it. So it's essentially a board with a bunch of holes in it, and we can plug components into these holes, and we can make connections. And so you have to understand how the board is connected underneath. So um, you'll see these rows going in this direction here. So you'll see one, two, three, four, five, then a break, one, two, three, four, five. The way they're connected is these five are electrically connected underneath the board, um, meaning that if I plug two wires into here, it's as though I've connected or soldered them together. Now this set and this set here are separate, so two things plugged into there are not connected. So if I take two little pieces of wire with wires stripped off the end, and I plug one there and one there, you can see they're in the same uh, row here. So those two wires, it's the same thing as though I've soldered them together like that. Now if I put them apart like that, they aren't connected. Now they're also not connected across this break in the middle. So if I follow along here and go there, those two wires are not connected to each other. So one, two, three, four, five. All five of those are connected. All five of those are connected. All five of those are connected. Um, in this direction, the connections run all the way along from here to here. So anywhere along here is connected. Um, same thing here. This entire row here, all the way from left to right, are connected. So that end and that end are connected. Um, it is common on some breadboards for there actually to be a break in the middle. The kind we're using in our class uh, do not have a break. So sometimes uh, they don't they don't actually connect all the way across they'll, they'll stop kind of halfway in the middle our style don't now the rows along uh, the top and the bottom here will be the ones that we use for power and ground and things that are common so we have a little special board uh, that we use in our class that looks like this and has some pins on the bottom and those plug in uh, exactly like that and so once this uh, board is plugged in and we plug either the USB or an external power supply in. If we look very carefully on the board, there's something that says five volts, which means we're supplying five volts of power all the way along here. Here we have zero volts or ground, so the bottom row is ground. And then this says 2.5 volts and 2.5 volts. So the row just inside, <clears throat> so not the, the, the outer one, but the one right here, is it two and a half volts? And this is also at two and a half volts. So they're equivalent, they're the same. So those are just connected to the same spot in the circuitry on our little board here. So in our class, we use zero to five volts as our full range of power. And the two and a half is our reference, or in many circuits will offer serve as a reference because it's sitting right in the middle of zero and two and a half. So often we'll talk about a voltage going up or down relative to two and a half. So two and a half is our reference. Zero to five is all for all full range. So once this is plugged in, you shouldn't plug any wire into here unless you want it to actually be at two and a half volts or five volts. Um, the next thing we should talk about is, is wire. So uh, here's some uh, black wire, a little easier to see than the white one. Um, and I'm going to cut off a little piece. And I'm going to use the wire strippers and to take a little bit of the insulation off so there you can see it and it's important now when you plug these things in is to cut about the right amount of length so the way to know about how long to cut it is it needs to be about the depth of the breadboard itself because when you plug the wire in you want to go all the way in and kind of feel it click if it's too long so for example if I took off something like this what often happens is students then jam that in, and sometimes it can actually curve up underneath the board and kind of pop up another, so it kind of shorts something out underneath the board where you can't see it. So that's bad, so don't cut off that much insulation. Another common mistake is to cut off too little. So you cut off something like that, and then you bend it over and plug it in. And if it's too short, it looks from the surface when you're debugging that the wire is plugged in, but when you actually uh, test your circuit, you'll find that the wire actually isn't making contact with the little clip underneath the breadboard. So that's bad as well. So again, what you want is just about the right amount. And again, if it's about the depth of the breadboard itself, you're about right. And you should feel kind of a click when it goes in. Now the next thing is that when you want a jumper 
you know, make a connection from one row to another, like connecting two components together. Uh, a common thing to do is clip off two ends and, you know, do something like that. Um, but if you look from the side, this isn't the greatest in the world because now you've got this kind of long loopy wire. Long loopy wires tend to be susceptible to noise. They also tend to be susceptible to falling out if you carry the circuit around, especially in your backpack. And so it doesn't take much for something to become tangled. Um, the other thing is if I start putting multiple wires on here, there's this tendency for it to be very disorganized and spaghetti-like. So you take another long loopy wire and you have them sort of crisscrossing and doing all sorts of crazy things. And so it's a little hard to kind of follow when you have long loopy wires. So what we usually recommend is if I want to connect, say, from this row to this row, is to you know sort of cut one end, lay the wire down, estimate about how long it is you need it, cut it off, strip off about the right amount, fold it over neatly, and make a nice kind of straight uh, connection where the wire is laying nice and flat. And so now it's nice and flat on the breadboard. So you want to keep kind of your components neat. Um, the other important thing uh, is that it's also nice to color code things. So it makes it a little bit easier for debugging. So a common thing is if I'm going to plug some component into ground, remember ground is here, zero volts, I'll often use black for that. So black would be my ground. So now this connection here, I've jumped from the ground rail out to this row here, so I've now connected this row to ground. But now it's black, so it's easy for me when I'm looking at the circuit to know that that particular row is ground. Another thing I'll do is if I want to plug something into the power, say the 5 volts, which is this one here, is I'll use a nice red wire, and I'll do something like that. So now I've got a red wire going from here to here, so now this whole row here is at 5 volts. And the color, of course, the wire works just as well, whether it's red or black or yellow or white, but it kind of makes it nice because now I can easily see this is power and this is ground. So a little bit of color coding uh, is a nice thing to do. The next thing is when we get to components, uh, one of our most common components is the resistor, which looks like this. And a common thing that students like to do is if they're connecting a resistor between two parts is to do something like that. This is really bad because now you've got this bare metal exposed and it's very likely that if you have multiple parts that you could contact things and short them out unintentionally. The other is again, just like with a long loopy wire, it's not very stable, it's easy for that to pop out. So there's kind of two ways we'd recommend doing this. One is you kind of fold the leads of the resistor over like so, and then you just trim them again about to the depth of the breadboard. So something about like that length there. And then when you plug it in, it fits nice and flat. And so now I have a resistor connecting this row to this row. And it's nice and stable, it's sitting flat to the breadboard. Another way which is also acceptable is, I'll do it with another resistor here, is to bend it over as such, like that, see? And again, take your wire cutters, trim a little bit off, and just put it in vertical like that. And so now I'm connecting two adjacent rows to the resistor, and it kind of sticks up, but it's still nice and compact. It's close to the board. It's not going to fall out. And if everything else is compact, there's not little risk of you shorting to that wire. So either of those look pretty good to me. Um, we use different styles of capacitors. Um, some look like this. And again, they have very long leads. Um, so connecting something like that is again, no good because you've got long loopy wires. We hate long loopy wires. So again, you can just cut the leads and pop it down so it's kind of nice and close to the board. So something like that is good. Some of the capacitors we use will already have short leads. So this particular style already, and those you can just use directly. The final component we should discuss are integrated circuits. Uh, we'll use a couple different styles, uh, but they're all kind of the same. So here's one with 14 pins that looks like this. And the way these work is there's a little notch, which is probably hard to see in the video, but you can see when you get one, which kind of denotes the top of the circuit. And they're all made to fit right across that little jumper. 
so we fit right across the break uh, in the breadboard. And there's always a question of should it go in uh, pointing to the left or should it go in pointing to the right. Uh, in reality it doesn't matter, but sometimes one configuration is a little more convenient uh, than another. So with this particular chip I'm going to choose to put it in this way so the little notch is facing to the right. And the reason I'm going to do that is because if I look at the uh, pin diagram for this uh, chip that tells me what uh, pins need to be plugged into which things, I'll find that this is a powered chip so it needs power. And so this particular chip is going to want 5 volts on this particular pin here. So when I plug my red wire in here, 5 volts gets transferred here and it's also connected to this pin. So the 1, 2, 3, 4th pin from the top from this side is connected to 5 volts. And on this pin, particular chip, the other side is going to need to be connected to ground. So if I do this and put a black wire there, jump from 0 volts over here, 1, 2, 3, 4 down on this particular side is ground. Now of course if I put the chip in the other way, I'd have to loop the red wire over and the black wire over, which is why I chose to put it in this particular way. Uh, Sometimes some of the chips we'll use will have uh, 8 pins. So here's another one that has an 8 pin package. So this one has 14, this one has 8, and it just depends on the type of chip you're using. Um, you might be able to tell, but I've put the notch on this particular chip facing in this direction. And again, I, I, I chose to do that because on this particular chip, uh, power and ground are on those sides. So that, oops, so this would be the the power and ground for those chips would, would be there. Um, some people don't like this because now my, I have one chip where the, the top is here, another chip where the bottom where the top is here. I'm okay with that. Some people aren't, so of course you could flip one of these around, but then you just have to loop the power over, which really isn't a big deal. And again, when I have this chip plugged in, if I want to make a connection to any of the pins on here, like say I need to connect something to this bottom one here, just plug a wire in and jump that over to some other part of the circuit. So that's probably enough for now. We'll get a lot of experience in our lab class uh, building with a breadboard, but I just want to show you a few things about how to put components in, and we'll talk a lot in class about how to breadboard uh, neatly uh, when you do your labs.